Oh my goodness, because we are extremely privileged and very fortunate. He's a great ambassador for golf in South Africa. Not only golf in South Africa, but golf around the world. And um, such is the nature of live radio that we didn't think we'd get hold of him today. He's a very, he's quite a difficult man to get hold of. But we are so glad that we did. He was awarded the ten. He was the tenth recipient of the PGA Tour's Lifetime Achievement Award, and wow. it was given to him on Wednesday last week, Wednesday at the Players Championship Woo-hoo! on the line. Woo-hoo! From the United States, from an airport in the United States, Mr. Gary Player. So, good afternoon. Hello, John, and give all those people in the background my love. Thank you very much. It's Simon, and it's, uh, it's also a former Miss South Africa as well, uh, Mr. Player, and uh, that's Nicole Flint. Mr. Player, we and met at, at the NetBank Golf Challenge, but you probably well, won't right, remember. How can I forget Oh, you? great. Then I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> So am I speaking to Simon, actually? You're yeah. speaking to Simon, you're speaking to John, All and you're us. speaking to Nicole, Mr. Player. <laughs> okay, Nicole and Simon, and nice to talk to you. And you've got to do me a favor. When we finish this interview, you've got to play a song called Forever Young for me and all people <laughs> that are getting on in age. Oh, that's beautiful, Mr. Player. And I mean, we know that uh, as, as far as physical fitness is concerned, you're always in peak uh, uh, fitness. And, and certainly, uh, I mean, a wonderful accolade in having received or being the 10th recipient of the PJs to a Lifetime Achievement Award. Yes, thank you, Simon. It was nice to be the first international player to receive this award. And it's, when they say lifetime, well, I've had a, it's been a long journey. I've been a professional now for just under 60 years and have traveled probably more miles than anybody that ever lived and have been blessed to, you know, dine with the, all the presidents of America or play golf or visit the Oval Office and the emirs in the Middle East and, and also uh, prime ministers and royal family and our leaders, but also in the villages of Africa with the ordinary day man who has an ordinary life and to appreciate his humility. Uh, so it's been a, and also in India where people have, are very, very poor and to meet those kind of people too has been a great honor for me. So I'm blessed. Well, Mr. Player, it's, you, you're 76 years young. What, what's your schedule looking like these days? You're in the States travel, now? Uh, Still extensively, we're designing golf courses in India and China and Montenegro and Honduras and the United States and uh, still representing a lot of companies, doing golfing outings with them and then still my farming in Colesburg where I'm on my way to this afternoon via London and uh, and still work out extremely hard physical fitness-wise. At least four to five times a week I do a thousand sit-ups and work with the weights and and watch my diet very carefully. I don't put any, you know, animal fats in my body. At least I try and keep them out as much as I can. It's not possible to do it all. I'm basically an 85% vegetarian and uh, feeling very well. So, but you're getting the years are going by. Yes. Well, someone else has joined us, Mr. Plan. I think he'd like to. He's also an avid golfer, not very good, but uh, Mr. Player. We call him Mr. Yes. Player. We, we have call him Mr. There's, un- there's only, there's the only one Mr. Player. There can only be one Mr. Player. That's true. Who is this golfer I'm talking to? And and a golfer he is too, Gary. He a golfer he is too. It's Darren. Darren Scott. How are you doing? Darren, nice to talk to you, my friend. How are you? I'm very, very good. Thank you. Sorry, I was uh, I was running a little late at a meeting. So the boys. That's the nice thing about having a and good girl. team around you. The boys and girls can just carry on without you. I think Mr. Player is just proud that you're running. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> really, you, you, you guys give so, the people in South Africa so much pleasure with your program, and you really are contributors. And I say thank you very much thanks thanks very much for that uh, that that message of endorsement gary it's really nice to hear from someone of your ilk i just want to ask you i've got a question that i want to ask you actually this morning i was thinking about it i saw you tweet this morning or yesterday <laughs> <laughs> now do you do your own tweets mr player no i have no my son's got to do that for me we have a conversation but he has to do it i'm i'm really uh, i tell you i'm illiterate when it comes to all these computers and cell phones and an iPad, it's uh, a bit beyond me, but I guess I'm going to have to learn. Well, listen, we, we are keeping in touch, uh, in touch of where you are and what you're doing, because uh, the tweet said something about, so happy to be back and just get some rest and downtime. Are you at the farm in Colesburg? No, right now I'm in uh, America and Florida, and I'm leaving oh. for London this afternoon where I've got some appearances, and then I'm going to Colesburg next Monday. All right, I think that's what he was tweeting about. Can't wait to get back home to South Africa and yes. just get some R&R down in Colesburg. Yes, that's right. Uh, you guys all well? Yeah, we hundreds. We uh into our second month of our new radio station. We're worldwide, we're online, we're uh 
broadcasting to the world and, and thoroughly enjoying it. It's, uh, you get as much enjoyment out of doing this as, uh, as, you, as you got and get out of golf. No, absolutely. I've, uh, I've been very blessed to be able to have this long career and I've been playing lately uh, over here and I've been beating my age by an, every day by an average of six shots. So, I mean, it, uh, by keeping in shape and eating properly, it really does make a great difference. And, you know, I appeal to all the mothers in South Africa to make sure their children... Obesity is doing so much harm in the world today and, you know, the... the the sorrow of obesity that it causes later in life or even early in life to children getting diabetes and high cholesterol. The mothers have got to keep making sure they watch what they eat. And we've got to keep, unlike America, they're wanting to take physical fitness out of schools. We've got to increase it in our schools. Why would they want to do that? Well, they're wanting to save money and it's going to cost them money with their welfare system, their health care system, excuse me. Uh, it's, uh, they're already a trillion over in their healthcare system. Mm. Uh, so, but it's a very different system over here. The kids, they don't seem to have all their sports at school. They go to another place uh, and, and they take part there. And the mothers and fathers are going to cart them all over the place. We're so lucky in South Africa with, with our schools that we have our sport right there. And we must continue along that vein because South Africa have been tremendous sportsmen and sportswomen. And I think it's because of our school system that this has happened. I want to ask Mr. Player a favor. When he gets back to South Africa, would you be able to send us a video of you doing some sit-ups and push-ups? We'd love to put it on our blog. <laughs> Simon. <laughs> Did you get somebody to take the video? <laughs> we, we'll, we'll happily do that. I want to see these thousand sit-ups you talk about. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, I had a, a young pro come here the other day. He was 26. He was in great shape. And he stayed at my home and he said, now listen, he says... Uh, Tomorrow we'll work out, and when you get tired, you can just watch me. I said, okay. And then we started the, 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 the crunches, and I put a 100-pound weight on my chest, and I did 300. <laughs> and he got on the floor there, and he just lay there. He says, I give up. He says, this is not propaganda. This is the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, there you go. There's the lesson. Gary shoots, uh, beats his age by six shots. Simon Hobday is shooting his age but beating it by only one or two. <laughs> well, we've got a different stomach. You know, at least I, with Simon, he hasn't seen his private parts in the last five years. <laughs> uh, awesome, Gary. Did you, hear this, did you hear the story with Simon when he went into hospital to have that prostate operation? Yeah. He's lying there, and there's a young guy lying next to him, and the young guy is a crazy golfer. The nurse comes in and says, Simon, look, this young kid, is, he's under anesthetic now, he's, uh, but when he comes round, He's going to be so excited to see you because he's a crazy golfer, but he have patience because he stutters. Anyway, eventually he comes around and he says to Simon, sit, 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 Simon, oh, 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 what are you doing here? Simon says, son, I'm here because I pee like you talk. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, just finally, Mr. Plough, I know that, uh, I mean, the guys uh, like Ernie, Trevor, uh, Retief, Rory, and even Louis, uh, you know, guys that have all this, uh, uh, have been influenced uh, by you, Charles, as well. Well, I know that you had a sit-down chat with them, and I'm sure they, 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 they could still learn a heck of a lot from you. Uh, I don't know about that, but anyway, they were very nice to attend this award that I was given in Florida, and it was uh, very, very nice indeed. Appar right. Mr. Blair, apparently the reason Louis didn't win the Masters is because he didn't answer your phone call before the round. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he played so well in what the commentators never picked up. On the last hole, when I beat Arnold Palmer in 61, I had the same putt he had, but it was a little shorter, and the putt broke quite severely from right to left, and Louis hit this putt, the most perfect putt, it, a machine couldn't hit it better, it didn't break, should have gone in, but then he had an opportunity when the man hit the ball in the trees in the playoff, and he didn't seize the moment, unfortunately, mm. but the other man did seize the moment, so that's how it goes. But Louis behaved so well. And the thing that was remarkable, because I did this in days when there were no jets, but even with jets, he flew over to Malaysia and won the tournament the next week. Yeah. I mean, that was mm. really, really impressive. Mm. Do you, do you just, uh, just a quick one on that playoff. Do you think uh, Louis should have taken driver? He'd been hitting it so well all round in the playoff, he took a three-wood uh, off the tee. Do you think he should have gone with driver? No, I think the three with is the right club because you have more loft on the club and you've got to hook it off the tee mm. and he never hooked it enough and it was a, a shame because when the man's in the trees, you've got to hit the fairway because you only have one chance in sudden death playoff. 
Yeah. And I know because I lost at least 12 sudden death playoffs in my life. But they shouldn't be having a sudden death playoff for the Masters. They, the U.S. Open have 18 holes. They're yeah. smart. But in the meantime, Bubba Watson was very fortunate to have a gap like that down there because it's just one mass of trees. Uh, but he hit a phenomenal shot out of there and went on and really deserved to win, I suppose. It's lovely to catch up with you, Mr. Player. And uh, when you do get back here, just uh, enjoy your rest and enjoy your time back on the farm. Uh, also, okay, thanks, guys, and thank you, my little sweetheart there. Thank and you, Mr. Player. And also okay, thanks to, to, to Beatrix Green. Thank you very much for setting that all up for us. Thanks very much, Beatrix. Right. Thanks, Gary. Cheers, Gary. Okay, cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Balls.co.za. Balls.co.za.